Welcome to a lesson with Artsy Rose. Today we're going to be creating an optical illusion um, using our hand and of course something to draw with. You'll need something to erase just in case like an eraser. Maybe if you like tracing things with Sharpie you could grab one of those and then of course something to color with. I will just be using crayons and I'll be creating a pattern today. All right guys go grab what you need and you can join in and grab your kids if you want to or just hang out with me okay so we are gonna start like I said I'm gonna do permanent marker and I'm gonna try to be really careful that I don't mark up my hand I will say anytime you try to trace around your hand with a marker it is possible to mark up your hand but I am gonna put my hand over here and I will get close enough hopefully without marking myself up. Notice that my fingers are spread apart just a little bit. If you do decide to do this project with your kids, you definitely might have to help them with the tracing part. Um, but the rest, they should be able to do just fine. All right, so we got our hand traced on here. So now what we need to do is we need to create some lines that will make um, it look as if it's a little bit of an optical illusion. We want to create the effect that our hand is raising up off the paper, like it's underneath the paper and it's trying to raise up off of it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and draw. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a curve line like a frowny face, curve line like a frowny face, and then we're going to go straight across. I'm going to connect these straight across. Then we'll continue again. We're going to do curve line straight, curve line straight, curve line straight, curve line straight, just like that. And then we'll continue frowny face curve, oh, straight, frowny face curve, straight, frowny face curve, straight. And we're going to continue this all the way down the hand. So notice all the lines that are on the hand look like frowny face curve lines. So again, frowny face, frowny face, whoop, frowny face. I almost got away from myself there, didn't I? Okay. Then we'll just do a major frowny straight, straight, major frowny straight, uh-oh little bit of a frown, straight, major frown, straight, straight, and again, straight, straight, and again, straight, straight, and we continue again, and again, and again, just like that. Now we don't want to leave this big old gap up here. So I am going to bring my lines across and across. Ooh, that line did not wind up very straight, but that is okay. So now that I have my hand traced and I have frowny face curve lines on the hand and straight lines on the edge, we are good to go with color. Now, like I said, I am going to use crayons just because um, it's a little quicker and easier. Plus, you can show value. You can show the lightness and darkness of a color very easily with crayon, whereas you cannot do that with um, marker. You could do it with colored pencil, though. And I do have one I want to show y'all. I should have put this up already. But this is kind of what we're going for. So we're going to create the different values, how we have the light and then we have the darker on the edge. That, my friends, is what we are trying to create when we make when we start coloring this picture. And I'm sure you've seen something similar to this somewhere else. Um, but... I thought I would teach y'all how to do it. It's just a fun little lesson that kind of brings it to life. Ooh, you could even make it look kind of creepy-ish for Halloween. Like you could do grays and blacks and do little pops of orange in there. That would be kind of cool. Like it's a hand raising up. Ooh, brown like dirt, like it's raising up out of the dirt. Okay, 
So I think I'm going to do, oh, I don't know, maybe a red violet and a blue violet and just do two color patterns. So a two color pattern would be an A, B pattern. Um, that's a great thing to teach your kids is patterns, whether they be whether they be A, B, A, B, C, um, just because it's getting them ready for math and it's getting them ready for problem solving. So anytime you can incorporate patterns into something, whether it be with the fruits and vegetables or with numbers or with colors, it's a great practice for the kids. Okay, so I am, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and start up here at the very top. Now notice that the top ones are just going to be normal. Now I always encourage trying to color the same direction. I'm using a pretty soft touch. Uh, well, maybe not soft. Let's go medium. We'll say a medium pressure on our background. So we have the red violet and then we have the blue violet. And I think I'm going to need to peel a little bit of this wrapper. I never take the whole wrapper off, A, because it's hard to take it off the ground, but B, because we want to have something to hold on to that's not waxy, right? So we'll put the purple on. Now, if this is what's best for your brain to alternate colors, great. Some people like to do all of one color and then switch to another color. So I'm going to get in here and do my red violet. Now, when I get close to the fingers, here's what we're going to do. So on the edge of the finger, I am going to color hard, hard, hard hard just like that and then whenever I get towards the center I'm going to color much softer so let me show you just like that so color hard on the edge and softer in the center okay so now we can carry on so in the center I will color much softer just like that and then I'll care continue coloring the rest of this section just like that. Okay, now we'll move on to, like I said, some people like to just stick with the same color. So they would skip color, skip color, skip color, skip and continue down. Or you can just alternate between the two colors, whatever's easiest on your brain. Another way you can do it too as long as you go kind of careful, is go ahead and color the whole area softly like this. So you could totally color the whole area in very soft. Then you could go back to your fingers and color those edges in dark. So that's always an option as well. Whatever kind of works for your brain. I know everybody's brains work a little bit differently. So I always try to show multiple ways in hopes that I can reach all types of learners. I know personally, I have to um, see things, I have to hear things, I have to do things before I completely understand. But maybe that's just me. Okay, so we'll continue on and you're gonna do this all the way Oh my goodness, the edges of those papers. You're going to continue this all the way down to the bottom of your paper. And we're making sure that we color left and right, left and right, left and right, just like that. And we're making sure that we take our time, we're not scribbling, we're not leaving white spots, and I'm trying to bring the darker edges the same distance in on every section of the finger. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is I'm bringing in the color, 
the same distance on both sides so that it's the nice same thickness. Okay. So we will carry on. I appreciate you guys watching my video all the way to the end so that you can see the end result. I know that you can see the end result on my previous project. That was a project I did with my virtual art enrichment kids, but you guys got to watch and see this one all the way to the end. And then definitely you will want to like and share it, right? Support Artsy Rose. Okay, so I'm working my way all the way down. Both sides of the fingers and then we carry on. Whoop, all the way, oh my goodness, to the bottom of the paper. If that happens to your kiddos a lot, you could definitely tape down like all the corners just lightly. Don't, you know, obviously don't put the tape down hard, but um, that would help uh, you or help them from their paper like ripping up every time. Super annoying. Okay. There we go, and then we move on to the next one. And again, my coloring lines go with the flow of the lines on the paper. They're not scribble scrabble, they're not all directions. That's definitely something that I try to teach my students is keeping your coloring lines going the same direction. Okay, now as I move my way down the hand, I want to start making the darkest, the darkness lines come in a little bit, come in a little bit more, come in a little bit more, and a little bit more, just to kind of create a little bit more depth and shadow in there, okay? So we'll move on to the next one. So MC Escher was a super cool optical illusion artist. I would highly recommend you looking at some of his stuff. I have a few of his things up in my classroom just because it makes the kids slow down for a minute and really like look at his art and think about it. And then it's so funny when they have their aha moment when they realize that it's really something different than what they originally thought it was. So it's a great um, opportunity to teach kids don't always believe your eyes because sometimes um, they can play tricks on you, right? So MC Escher is a pretty cool optical illusion artist. I know I have been intrigued by his work since I was a kid. Okay, so this time I had to carry some color onto the side of my hand, but also on my thumb. Okay. Ah, oh. silly edge. Okay. And I'm just using like a medium pressure. I'm not coloring too hard. I'm not coloring too soft. And then now I go back and I use some decent pressure to color in these edges, right? We want to use a little extra pressure on those edges. There we go. It gets easier, I guess, the further down you get because you get away from all those fingers. And so maybe it goes a little bit quicker. I feel like it's going quicker now. And I just think the end result is super cool. And I think that you could do this with so many different things besides just a hand. You could try to do shapes and make your shapes look like they're popping up off the paper. You could try to do... Um, Oh, hmm, a foot. <laughs> um, you could try to do, oh, a face maybe? That makes me think of those, I can't remember what they're called. Um, 
they they're a rectangle and they have um, the plastic cover on them and then they have all these little metal pins in them that are not pokey they're 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 gentle and you can like you know put it down on your hand and your hand shows up or you could put it on your face that was my brother and my favorite we put it on our face and then like lift your face up and keep keep those pins just exactly perfect and then you could see the contour of your face super cool right so that's always um that's kind of what this makes me think of is that toy that we used to have when we were little i don't even remember what those things were called you guys will have to leave me a comment and tell me what they're called because i don't remember sorry i'm oh. having trouble she talks to me a lot <laughs> Uh, she talks to me a lot. I think it's because I raise my hand, like because my hand's raised up while I'm trying to color and she thinks I'm talking to her. She does it when I'm teaching lessons too and the kids think it's funny. Okay. Color that edge. Might have brought my edges in a little bit too much, but that's okay. That's okay. And then we'll go into purple. Now, since the arm is way more curved down here, it's a good idea to color that part in with a curve and then straighten up your lines when you get over here. There we go. There we go. And one and you guys hung in there with me and watched it all the way to the end I appreciate it so now you kind of step back and you kind of look okay I could sort of smooth out this area just a little bit more kind of even this up a little bit right here this is kind of bothering me so I can fix that just a little there we go. All right. Like I said, anywhere you can kind of do some touch-ups. And kind of touch those up a smidge. There we go. Come over here. All right. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Fabulous. So that, my friends, is my very cool, and it looks really neat from a distance, um, optical illusion. And super excited about this project and all the possibilities of all the different things that you could draw um, to make it look like it's raising up off the paper. So thanks for joining me. Please, please, please um, subscribe to my channel. Um, definitely like and leave me some comments, thumbs up, all that good, awesome social media stuff. I appreciate y'all and I cannot wait to do some more art with you.